This was a time millions of years before the dinosaurs, when strange and half-forgotten creatures walked the earth. They were called therapsids, half mammal, half reptile. The first creatures ever to fully conquer life on land. In any one locality, you would find 50 or 60 different species of, of reptiles living side by side, specializing on different diets, different habitats, and so on. For 30 million years, these strange creatures ruled the Earth. This was a thriving, stable world, as complete in its own way as ours is today. Then, around 250 million years ago, almost every living thing suddenly died. Buried under the frozen wastes of Siberia are thousands of miles of lava. It's an area known as the Siberian Traps. Today, the region is covered in snow and vegetation. But below the surface are the ancient remains of the biggest and most destructive volcanic eruptions the world has ever witnessed. 250 million years ago, hundreds of thousands of square miles of Siberia caught fire. One of the first scientists who looked at it in detail was Vincent Cortelot. I probably would have seen a curtain of red glowing fire rising a mile high up in the atmosphere, extending from end to end of the horizon over a distance of hundreds of kilometers. It's a phenomenon known as a flood basalt eruption. When the Earth's crust splits apart and releases curtains of lava across an entire continent, the eruptions can last for millions of years. Nobody is quite sure why they happen. You get a huge eruption, and another, and another, and maybe a lull, and another bunch of ten, and then another, all together, over a few hundred thousand years. The Earth is almost continuously spewing out lava until after a million years or so, millions of cubic kilometers have erupted. So this is a truly gigantic volcanic object thousands, tens of thousands of times larger than anything man has ever seen. In America, geologist Peter Ward was also looking at the evidence. He knew that to do so much damage, the change in world temperatures would have had to have been rapid and dramatic. You have to have a very sudden but very large increase in temperature to have done the mayhem and the destruction that is this mass extinction. Ward looked more closely at the data from the Siberian traps. He estimated the amount of lava they'd produced and used this to calculate how much carbon dioxide they would have emitted. He then calculated what this would have done to world temperatures. We've looked at the traps, the Siberian traps, We've tried to estimate how much gas would have come out of them and how much warming would that have done. And it turns out that in the worst case scenario, and of course for the world it was a worst case, they may have raised the temperature of the Earth about five degrees. The geological record shows that when world temperatures rise abruptly by four or five degrees, many species will die. But he could also see there was no evidence that such an increase would wipe out 95% of all life. His calculations showed that to do that would require a much bigger increase in temperature, perhaps double. Most scientists estimate that a rapid temperature rise of maybe 10 degrees is going to be necessary to kill off so many animals and plants and everything else. Five degrees, the Siberian traps with their five degrees, it would have created certainly climate change, but a mass extinction? I don't think so. 
the extinction had occurred in three distinct phases. The extinction crisis first begins on land, and what, what we see is species of plants, species of um, animals start disappearing. About 40,000 years this goes on for. This was the first phase, a period when some, but by no means all, land species died. And then what happens next, at about 40, 45,000 years after the crisis has begun, is that we see a really quite sharp, abrupt extinction in the seas at this time. So this is, this is the marine extinction event, much shorter and sharper than what we see on land. So the second phase of the extinction was the abrupt death of virtually everything in the sea. Then came the third phase, as the extinction moved back to the land. Following on from that, we then see the culmination of the land extinction. So we, we start losing all our typical plants and all our typical animals as well. And this carries on to a point of about 80,000 years after the extinction began. Analysis of the rock showed that just after the marine extinction, but before the final death of everything on the land, there was a mysterious increase in a form of carbon called carbon-12. This is normally produced by rotting plant and animal matter, but this was a huge increase, too big to be explained by that alone. Dickens was curious. Several years earlier, he'd spent time on a drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico, prospecting for a new source of energy called methane hydrate. It's a gas frozen in huge reservoirs just below the seabed. Dickens knew this methane contained massive quantities of carbon-12. He also knew there were dozens of these methane hydrate reservoirs scattered around the world's coasts. It started, as many had thought, with the Siberian traps. Thousands of miles of lava flows would have burst from cracks deep in the Earth's crust. This was the first killer. Imagine the world for Dicynodon as he crawls out of his hole in South Africa and, and looks at the sky. It may be a bit purple, it may be a bit blue or red because of the very distant uh, volcanic eruptions in, in Russia. Um, he may feel it a bit warmer at first. Year by year, progressively, this gets worse and worse. There would have been a freezing winter, followed by slow but steady global warming. Gradually, the world would have heated up by four to five degrees. On land, some species died. Then the sea must have heated up. Marine life would also have died. Then something new happened. The hotter water would have released the second killer from the deep, the methane. This huge injection of greenhouse gas now pushed world temperatures up a further five degrees. The world was now 10 degrees hotter. A temperature rise of 10 degrees may not sound very much, but 10 degrees would mean this part of the south of England would turn into the Sahara Desert. Almost all life in every shape and form across the surface of the globe would have died. It would take nearly 100,000 years for life on Earth to begin to recover. When it did, a new family of creatures ruled the world. This was the birth of the age of the dinosaurs.